Tommy Dorfman, uh, you co-star in the Netflix series 13 Reasons Why as Ryan, yes. uh, who is one of the classmates uh, who we find out is a part of a series of events that, that led a teenage girl, Hannah Baker, to commit suicide. Um, it's based on a novel by Jay Asher. Uh, had you read it before you got the opportunity to be on the show? I read the book about halfway through the audition process. Um, you know, I, I went in initially for a different character. And then once I started getting called back for Ryan, I felt like it was really important to get Jay's version of the story at least. So yeah, I read it, I think, right before my producer session. Um, you know, I read it in a day, it's a quick read. It was really impactful. It only, it made me just want to do the project even more, honestly. Uh, which, which character had you uh, initially gone into to read for? I think we all initially went in for Clay and Hannah. They mm -hmm. sort of, I mean, they saw so many people for all of the parts. Um, and it took them a really long time to cast the show. And so I did, I initially went in for Clay and then like a month later got brought in for Ryan. Now, now this is your first major TV series role. Uh, so what was going through your head once you got the part um, and, uh, you know, and you were starting to shoot on this, you know, this really major Netflix uh, uh, 13 episode series? Yeah, you know, I graduated from college in 2015 and then not even a year later I booked the show and I hadn't, I really hadn't done anything other than like one very small non-union, non-speaking role prior to this, at least professionally. Um, and I'd never worked on camera because I studied, I trained in theater. So, you know, by the time I got the role, I was just honestly so relieved because I had gone through, you know, the ringer of that. And I learned so much in that process, you know, like going through producer sessions and chemistry reads and, and what it's like to sort of handle yourself in those rooms and on that level. Um, it was so surreal when I landed in San Rafael where we were shooting. Um, just to see like all the Paramount trucks everywhere, going in for my first fitting for anything ever. Um, and sort of not knowing at the beginning of this process how big of a part my character was gonna play in the show. You know, I knew what he had done to Hannah in the book, but you know, it, it was all sort of news to me as I kept getting episodes and episodes um, throughout. I have to say, I think, you know, I was so fortunate to work with the people I got to work with on my first project. Um, I think it's rare to have a team that's so talented and and for the most part experienced on the creative side. I think it was exciting for Brian because it was his first sort of foray out of theater and into film and television. Um, his first time running a show for anything. And for me, it was the first time I even learned what a showrunner was. <laughs> um, just sort of being with these people. And, and Diana San was really influential my first day on set. You know, she was there. And, you know, I was surprised that, yeah, I mean, by the time I was on set and we were working, I sort of kind of forgot how big of a deal it was. And then that, that kind of carried me through the six month process of shooting this is that you know, we were so incubated in this small town in San Rafael and was really just focused on the work. And a lot of us actors really hadn't done anything prior to this. Um, so it was funny for me, like the months we had off, I kind of forgot that it was going to be released one day. Um, and so when it did come out, it became such a sort of phenomenon for a lot of different reasons. You know, that was a whole nother experience. Yeah, what was that process like when when it, when it came out? Like you mentioned, you know, you finish shooting and then you have to wait and then it comes out. And was it just suddenly an explosion of, you know, just attention and, and you know, it, or was, has it been like a gradual build? I mean, it's only been out for about a month and it's already become a pretty, yeah. pretty significant, uh, uh, pretty big deal. Yeah, I think, you know, there's no way to anticipate that level of sort of success, I think, for a show and being in a show and especially being my first job, I really didn't have anything to compare it to. I will say it felt to me like an overnight sort of sensation. <laughs> um, at least my phone was blowing up in a way that it hadn't ever before, um, whether that's from like social media stuff, which you know clearly is playing a bigger and bigger role in this industry um, or you know other people, you know, casting directors, directors, uh, managers, people reaching out. Um, people I hadn't had the opportunity to sort of meet with, now I've had the opportunity to meet with just in the last four weeks. You mentioned, uh, you know, some of the, some of the uh, seasoned uh, uh, producers and, and writers, directors, and, and, you know, some of the other actors, uh, especially in the adult cast on, on the show, you know, Tom McCarthy, Selena Gomez, as you mentioned, Brian Yorkie, Pulitzer Prize winner. Uh, were you familiar with a lot of work, the prior work of the people you suddenly found yourself working with? Yeah, I mean, Brian Yorkie, I idolized. Like, I mean, I told him this. I was like, Next to Normal was the first Broadway show I ever saw. I saw it with my mom. I was visiting colleges in New York at the time. We saw it again 
which like to get my mom to go see a Broadway show again is like unheard of. Uh, but it you know really resonated with her. I think we have a lot of similar sort of family traumas, and she really connected to it as did I. And I'd never seen a musical that was so contemporary, and it didn't feel like this big show. It really just felt like storytelling um, on the most like simple, clean level. And so that was who I was most uh, nervous about doing my work in front of for the first time in the producer session. Um, as far as Tom McCarthy's concerned, I love Spotlight. I thought it was such an important film. It was an honor to, sort of, to get to work with him on my first project. Obviously, I knew who Selena was. Um, <laughs> she, I'd seen her in concert, actually, so like in the middle of my audition process. My husband bought me tickets for my birthday to go see her in concert. Um, so it was funny to start working with her on that level. And then, you know, everyone over at like Anonymous Content, like there's, like, you know, like Joy Borman Weddles is such an inspiration to me. And, um, She's had so much positive sort of feedback and taught us a lot on the show. And getting to work with people like Derek Luke and Kate Walsh and just seeing their process and seeing how how they, both their relationship to the text and to the storytelling, but also their relationship on set to the other people who are working on set and how they work with different directors. And I think that's the best thing about TV, at least our show, is that you know I got to work with six different directors. You know, people like Greg Araki and Paul Franklin um, and Kyle Patrick Alvarez, you know, people that I don't, I don't think I would have necessarily had the opportunity to work with them in film right away, and so to kind of get that experience within six months and, and see how different people work in the same in the same format is really interesting. I feel like I learned a lot just from just from that. Uh, your character uh, Ryan, uh, he writes for a publication at the uh, high school, and he writes poetry yes. also. Um, you know, and and you know, he's a little bit uh, you know maybe cynical uh, about <laughs> certain things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What appealed to you about the, this character? I think what was really exciting to me about Ryan is that he was so confident for a high schooler. I didn't have that experience when I was in high school, and so to revisit high school from that lens was really interesting to me. Someone who, who was really a go-getter and knew what he, you know, Ryan knows what he wants. Whether that's what he wants five years from now, you know, isn't really relevant, but he knows what he wants in the day, and he's working really hard towards that goal. You know, his goal and the way sort of I created the character was like basically to get into an Ivy League college and get the hell out of town. You know, he doesn't have a lot of friends. He's not really there to socialize. When he is in group settings, he's not afraid to speak his mind, um, for better or for worse. You know, he started his own publication at the school that's created a reputation. He published a poem that then got talked about in classrooms, and you know, clearly it broke the it broke up the relationship he had with Hannah. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, I was just sort of inspired by his and his activism as like a, a very open and comfortable queer person in high school. Um, you weren't telling the traditional coming out gay kid story, the bullying story even. You were telling a completely different story that I'd seen told in a high school setting. You know, someone who's comfortable being gay and it's not about that. Um, and so that for me was really exciting because I never had that growing up. I never had characters like that to look up to. Um, and I don't know if you necessarily want to call Ryan someone you would look up to, <laughs> but I think towards the end of the season he proves himself to be a very sort of rational person and then someone who's honest and owns up to their shit you know, isn't afraid to call other people out on, on what they've done wrong or, you know, supporting a rapist, for example, like isn't afraid to call people out on that. Oh, uh, the, the series follows uh, the main character uh, as Clay, as, as we mentioned, uh, as he's listening to the tapes that Hannah left behind to explain uh, her suicide. Yes. Uh, but then, you know, several other students have already listened to the tapes, uh, including Ryan, uh, but we never get to see those other students experience that. Uh, how did you imagine, uh, or, or did you try to imagine at all, uh, that experience, how it might have been for, for Ryan when he had the tapes? I did. I think what's so great about the writing of this show um, I knew when I started auditioning, I was like, Ryan's listened to the tapes, purely based on the way he's talking to Clay and the way he interacts with, you know, Tyler in the show, like in episode four, and the other characters in present day. Um, and so there's, it's very subtle in all these scenes, but it's clear that like, everyone's trying to figure out who has the tapes, who's listened to the tapes. Do you know what I've done? You know, I know what you've done. And obviously he's before Clay. Um, for me, I felt like Ryan listened to them in one sitting and wasn't affected by, you know, I think felt compassion towards Hannah about what he did, but was more concerned about the actions that, you know, what had happened to other people. Um, 
while at the same time not wanting to get caught up in you know the potential of getting kicked out of school because of what he did the potential of and you know that kind of stuff i think is what we'll see maybe in season two a little bit more of that a little bit more of like the fear that goes into receiving these tapes and then having to pass them on um but you know he's a pretty rational person and my and sort of what i created with this character in his past was that he listened to them he took for note what happened but now he's ready to kind of like move forward and figure out like is someone else going to like spill his beans um and, and and how can he help the other characters that maybe weren't didn't do things that were nearly as bad as maybe is what bryce did or even what tyler did now uh, you know, ryan finally gets uh you, we finally get to ryan's tape and somewhere in the middle of the season it's around episode eight i think it is um and, you know at that point we, we get to learn much more about uh this character who you know had made appearances throughout the rest of the series up to that point uh, what was it like finally getting to shoot that episode and, and filling in some of those blanks of, of who Ryan was and, and, and what his part in the story was? Yeah, I think it was really exciting. I mean, there's something to be said about not having so much material early on in a show like this. Um, it allowed me a lot of freedom to create my backstory and create the history with my character and develop you know, my idea of what my relationships were with the other characters, um, which was really useful when we got to episodes like 10 and episodes 12, when we were all sitting at a table together, I already kind of had a fleshed out idea of our histories. And that's not really important necessarily to always communicate with the other actor. It's just good to know that so that like, I, like what, how Ryan reacts to each person and, and how he feels about each person. Um, I was really grateful to work with Greg Araki on my episode. He, you know, is someone I've admired for a long time and, you know, another, gay person in the industry who's really like fought for that um, and fought for gay presence in the industry. And he, you know, he had a lot to offer. It was really great working with Catherine Langford, um, also someone who hadn't done anything prior to this and clearly had a lot more material to go with <laughs> um, throughout the entire process. And yeah, I was just excited to, to work more and to, to spend more time on set. And as far as seeing the backstory, I, I loved the relationship that was written for for Hannah and Ryan, um, you know, neither of them had a lot of friends. And I think there was this really beautiful friendship that developed and unfortunately fell apart due to what, you know, due to Ryan's actions. But those were like the most fun scenes to film. These like sort of figuring each other out scenes. These, who are you? Why are you here? Are we going to be friends? I actually admire you. This teacher student thing that went down for a little bit. Um, you know, that was really cool to see and to see this you know, that Ryan has a heart because a lot of his stuff prior to that was very just sort of quick. Um, and even towards the end, calling people out. And, and, and this definitely gave me more breadth for, for him as a whole. as like a three-dimensional character and not just sort of a one-liner here and there. Now, uh, yeah, there, there are, uh, there's another relationship that's really interesting on the show that we, we, we only get like bits and pieces of, um, yeah. at least from season one, uh, is between Ryan and Tony, uh, who, you know, you mentioned, uh, seeing a different kind of experience that, that Ryan has as a, as, a, as a gay teenager in high school. Uh, that's also another uh, uh, very different experience that Tony has, and, and they have a kind of connection that we don't see that much of. Uh, is that something you'd like to, to explore more of in, in, in you, know, you know, knock on wood when, when the show is eventually renewed? Yeah, I'm sure when we get our pickup. Um, I think Yes, 100%. I actually did a chemistry read prior to getting cast with Christian Navarro. Um, and so we didn't end up having that much in the season, which, you know, I was like, it's interesting that we did a chemistry read. However, I can see moving forward how that should be explored. Um, you know, Christian and I have had countless conversations about, you know, maybe like why we broke up, why our characters broke up, why it didn't work out. You know, part of me feels like, to the only two out gay kids in high school end up dating each other and that's just like kind of what happens and so i think it was great that we kind of told that story really sub like subtly um there were other scenes that sort of didn't make the cut between us and i think you know that because there's something special about the mystery of that relationship um and how that unfolded and how that affected each of the characters you know going on their own path i'd be really excited to see you know what could be written for them moving forward if, if it ends up being like we're flashing back a lot again and seeing sort of like how what was the relationship really like and like how did it fall apart and what you know was it because of the tapes that they broke up or or was it because they genuinely were not going to be good together you know they just really they weren't able to be in a relationship together and able to support each other um 
So I would be really curious to see to see how that sort of falls out. And then what is their future together? Because in a lot of ways, they're aligned in, in sort of how they feel about the other people on the tapes and what's going on, um, respectively. So it'd be interesting to see them have a conversation about that. The more we learn about, uh, um, you know, the more, you know, e even the ones who, you know, contributed to, to Hannah's suicide in, in, in large ways or in small ways, uh, the more we realize, you know, how complex all of their, their own individual stories are and, and none of them are exactly, you know, as, as you know, what meets the eye. Uh, did your feelings about Ryan and about even the other characters, uh, you know, change over the course of, you know, uh, shooting the show, watching the show, or even reading the book when you were reading the book? Yeah, I think, you know, what this show does well is it introduces you to each character kind of slowly. And so you have this initial perception of who they are, like you said. And then as the story unfolds and you get more backstory, you start to see all facets of their life. Um, you know, particularly Brandon Glenn's character, Justin. You know, at the beginning, it's sort of someone you hate and you kind of love to hate because of what they do and the type, the type of person they are, especially as, like, me, like, just talking personally from watching it as sort of like the weirdo in high school, like the jocks and I were never friends. Um, but then to see that Justin has this really tragic family life and, you know, like basically no relationship with his parents towards the end, like practically homeless, um, potentially a runaway. So that for me, you know, I, you start to, I start to relate to these characters in ways that I never thought I would. And I think that's the power of the show and, and the conversations that we're starting is, you know, everyone has more than one the eye. You know, just because they're in a cheerleader costume doesn't mean they're not struggling with addiction issues, doesn't mean they haven't, you know, experienced extreme trauma in their lives. Um, doesn't mean their family lives are perfect just because we're all smiling at school. Mm. Yeah, and, and the show has uh, been subject to to some controversy, uh, which is which is understandable, you know, given how delicate the subject matter is. Not just the suicide, but you know, the substance abuse uh, issues some of these characters face, the sexual assault issues, um, you know, you know, and and I think one of the major points of of uh, controversy for the show has been the decision uh, ultimately to actually show uh, Hannah's suicide uh, towards the end. Uh, yeah. What did what did you personally think about that decision and, and how it was handled? I think it was really important that we showed that suicide. I think in the book, she, killed, she dies by suicide by overdosing on pills. Um, and from what I understand, and I obviously wasn't in the writer's room for this, and I wasn't there while they were shooting this. But from what I understand, you know, we didn't want suicide to look like an easy option, or really an option at all. And I think if we had skimmed past that, sort of just vaguely showed it, if, if we had used pills instead of you know, cutting herself, um, it would have looked like something that, you know, you could do and there wouldn't be, you know, there wouldn't be personal pain consequences in that regard. So to actually show the suicide in every single step of it, I think is really powerful. Um, it is not for everyone. You know, it is, there's a disclaimer for a reason. As someone who's, you know, suffered in high school with suicidal thoughts and all, you know, I don't know if I would have been that person in high school who would have been ready necessarily to see that scene, but I do think it's really crucial that we see that. And more than that, we see her parents walk in and what it looks like to the family um, and afterward. Otherwise, you know, I don't think we see how impactful that can be. Um, and as far as, you know, rape is concerned in the show, which there, there are two significant scenes that are very explicit, if you want to call them that, but also important because there's, I've never seen a young adult show tackle these issues um, so truthfully and so honestly. And, and that's why I think the conversations have started, you know, people praising it and people having concerns about it and people not even willing to watch it but giving their opinion about it. Um, you know, and again, like, I think that's great. That's great dialogue on the mass level. Um, you know, high schooler, it's hard for high schoolers to see what high schoolers are actually doing. I think it's even harder for parents of high schoolers to see what their kids might actually be doing. You know, just because they look like the good kids, just because they're excelling in sports, doesn't mean that they're not capable of, you know, extreme harm to another classmate. And I know from being in high school that that was happening in high school. Um, all of my co-stars share similar sentiments. My friends who have watched the show, family members who have watched the show, 
fans who have DM'd me. You know, I get DMs every day talking about like, this is my experience. This is exactly what happened to me. Um, and that's really powerful. And just that the fact that these conversations are even happening is amazing to me. Yeah. Given the given the subject matter that the show deals with, uh, and uh, uh, you know, and and the fact that it's about uh, young teenage characters, and and a lot of its viewers and fans now are teenagers uh, uh, who who might be experiencing similar things, or know someone who might be experiencing things like this, uh, you know, on either end of the bullying uh, spectrum. Uh, what do you hope viewers will you know take away from this uh, in terms of you know, you know? Not necessarily like the moral of the story, but you know, kind of, right. kind of a, a, a takeaway to, to you know that will kind of improve uh, the lives of, of, of you know teenagers. Goodness knows, I could have used it in high school also. Totally, I think you know this kind of touches on what we were talking about before, which is like not judging a book by its cover um, and not being afraid to communicate with your other peers. And I, I think what the show has done, and you know, I was recently talking to someone I went to high school with who she teaches choir in a high school, but she walked in on Monday after the show came out and the entire choir like, class was talking about depression and suicide and sexual assault. And then I think what was even more meaningful about that was that the jocks in the class were talking to the theater nerds, were talking to like the academic, you know, every clique was conversing over these similar topics and sharing you know, their experiences with it and relating to one another on a different level. Um, and so I hope that's sort of the major takeaway from the show. To me, is like it opens the doors for, the, for that dialogue to happen with people who maybe normally wouldn't interact with one another. And you know, start seeing, and like we even said, is it like to start seeing your, people start seeing their classmates as, you know, well-rounded, full, diverse, independent individuals as opposed to just, you know, uh, calling them off as, I think, like, that's the jock, like, he's the asshole, like, I'm not going to talk to him, or, you know, the, or as the jock, that's the nerd, like, why would I ever, I don't want to be seen with him because it doesn't look good for my social, like, my Instagram page, um, whatever it ends up being. So I think for me, like, that's that's been the takeaway of this show, and, and I know that's been a takeaway for high, actual high schoolers who are watching it. Well, uh, I want to say thank you again for uh, talking with me today, and, and congratulations yeah. on on the show. Uh, looking forward to a second season, which could, I mean, you know, it could take any number of forms uh, given the way uh, season one ended. So yeah, I think it's really exciting. That. We passed the book. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Thank you so much. It was good to talk to you.